There is no doubt that it's a special painting, a masterpiece. Its creator is one of the most celebrated and enigmatic artists in history, and the scene it portrays is among the most powerful ever depicted, central to the story of a world religion. But could it just be that there is even more to Leonardo's The Last Supper than this? A secret message or messages that have eluded understanding for generations. That painting itself requires little introduction as it's one of the most recognizable and frequently discussed works in Western art. Its place in popular culture has been secured by numerous references in novels movies and other cultural mediums and over the generations since it was produced many myths legends and interpretations have grown up out around it so what does the painting itself reveal central to the picture is jesus christ the son of god according to the christian religion joined by christ in the picture are his twelve apostles According to the Bible, these are the twelve men who most closely followed the teachings of Jesus and who would spread his message after his death. But that seemingly isn't the scene Leonardo da Vinci, the celebrated painter of the masterpiece, wishes to concentrate on, although his symbolism certainly exists within the painting. Instead, the moment revealed in the painting is that when, According to the four canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Jesus informs his closest followers that one of them will shortly betray him. The emotion that perhaps best sums up the expressions of those featured in the painting, older than Jesus himself, is consternation, consternation that one of them, the twelve apostles of the Son of God, would betray their Lord. Indeed, the featured protagonist's body language suggests that this may be the most overt message portrayed in the Last Supper. In terms of subject matter, it certainly wasn't unusual to depict the last meal of Christ and his disciples in works of art at the time. Pietro Perugino's interpretation painted only a matter of years earlier in 1490, shares similarities with Leonardo's masterpiece. Although Perugino has the traitor, Judas, sitting on the opposite side of the table from the rest of the apostles. All the works from the period shared Leonardo's placement of the diners, however. The context of the meal in terms of biblical narrative is set out in all four of what are known as the canonical Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Leonardo's painting itself was based on the latter, a matter of days after Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to the adulation of the crowds there. An important meal is shared by the thirteen central figures in the story. This becomes known as the Last Supper or Passover meal, and during its course, several important events occurred. First of all, Jesus predicts that one of his apostles will betray him to the people who will later come to arrest him. This is the scene that in Leonardo depicts in the Last Supper, with the apostles seen to be reacting in dismay to the news that someone at the table will be disloyal to their lord. The second important event that takes place at the meal is the establishment of the Eucharist. This is the Christian rite of taking bread and wine as the representation of the body and blood of Christ. It's a ritual that forms the basis of Holy Communion, or the Lord's Supper, which is a sacrament still performed by most Christian denominations. Thirdly, at the meal, Jesus states that the disciples Peter will deny knowing his Lord three times before the following morning sun has risen. This revelation again causes consternation among the gathered apostles. However, it's the prediction of betrayal that concerns Leonardo in his interpretation of the scene as set out in the Last Supper. 
The center of this issue is the character situated to the left of Jesus as you look at the painting. According to most art historians and scholars, this figure is the disciple John, who was the youngest of the twelve apostles. However, in Leonardo's unmistakable style, the gender of this person can easily be questioned due to the length of the subject's hair and effeminate features. As a result, it's been claimed by some that this figure is in fact a woman, and if that's true, then her identity becomes an even greater source of controversy. One of the most popular theories in this vein was used as part of the central theme in Dan Brown's incredibly popular 2003 novel, The Da Vinci Code. As the novel's title suggests, its premise is that the great polymath and artist planted hidden messages in his works of art, which are intended by Leonardo to signify the revelation that Jesus was actually married to Mary Magdalene. The novel alludes to the fact that there is a letter M featured in the center of the painting, and it's suggested that this represents both Magdalene and the idea of marriage. Tade believes this omission of halos was in itself Leonardo's real message and was itself a controversial decision. I believe that Leonardo never put the halos because he thinks that those people are common people and this is the true secret of Leonardo. Tade explained, There is no extraterrestrial or supernatural object inside the Last Supper. Leonardo wants to tell us that the thirteen men are simple men, and this is something much more powerful. It's one of the enduring legacies of the work that the theories keep coming, because others claim there to be yet more messages hidden within the painting. One relates to the numbering system used in Leonardo's grouping of the diners in the painting, a grouping can be calculated as 33,133, with Jesus as the solitary one in the middle of the group. One version of that tale states that Leonardo identified a young man who possessed all the facial characteristics the painter was looking for in his depiction of Jesus. Years later, the painting was nearly complete but for the face of Judas seeking a suitably sinister or sinful, subject to base his interpretation on. Leonardo went to a local prison and sought out a prisoner. It was only after completing the picture, however, that he discovered that it was one and the same man. And Paola eventually found something after he transposed musical stuff lines over the painting. Then he used particular religious symbols such as the bread and the hands to identify musical notes. But the composition only truly made dense when Paola realized that the score had to be read in Leonardo's distinct writing style, right to left.